In ASP's program for the enhancement of research information works with 21 partner countries and over 80 network countries. When the program began in 2001, Kenya was one of five countries initially involved. Uh, when Perry came to Kenya, I was in charge of the periodical sections in the University of Nairobi. And um, we had missed funding. The, the, the government had actually withdrawn funding from public universities. And for six years, we did not have a budget for journals, subscribing to journals. So that had a very negative impact on researchers. Not only that, even our teaching staff, our, library, our students lost confidence in the library because we couldn't really buy anything. Uh, Perry came at a time when the world was moving towards um, access to the internet, access to the world wide web, access to electronic resources. And uh, these were issues that we were not very familiar with initially. So it has been a running experience for me. And this uh, running experience has, has also translated to staff and um, students in my institution because the knowledge I've gained, I've used it in the training programs at the institution. Despite early success, in 2003 funding became scarce once again. In discussions with the country coordination team and Kenyan institutions, it was suggested that a library consortium be developed. Ten institutions came together to form the Kenya Library and Information Services Consortium. Uh, before, before, before the, the, um, the establishment of the consortium, Resource sharing was uh, was a thing not really very well developed in uh, among the institutions. But with the consortium now, we we are able to access uh, resources. We are able to train. It increased. It enhanced uh, connectivity within institutions because then we found that from three to four institutions, all the f ten institutions were connected within two years. And then we made it a policy that before you become a member of the consortium, you must ensure that you have connectivity. Within seven years, the member institutions of KLISC have risen from 10 to 71, all of which have internet connectivity. In an effort to enhance research capacity, the infrastructure was vastly improved. The infrastructure. Um, when the, you cannot have continuous or reliable internet accessibility, it becomes a challenge. It also becomes a challenge to you as a, as a trainer. We we'll also see, as usual, the infrastructure story. You'd get to some institutions when you're doing the campus trainings because they're located deep down in the interior. The lack of uh, infrastructure and sometimes the slow internet connectivity was a big challenge. And uh, people now are aware of electronic resources, they will not have been aware. Uh, Kenya has a consortium that has, um, has come up through, the, through our work with Perry, and this consortium now has brought us together and we are able to subscribe to resources. So when um, the Perry project came in, uh, there was a lot of focus on sustainability to help the people at the grassroots, at the national level, to own the program. And for us in Kenya it worked very well because we owned the program, we came up with a consortium, people were determined that this consortium must work, and it has worked. So we are at a stage where even without INAS, we are able to move on. Improved access and capacity building are only one aspect to the research communication cycle and show impact over time, requiring a strong research culture, clear policies and the infrastructure necessary to support it. We have seen our statistics go up year after year and it has made us very happy. 
So we also find that our researchers are very keen. They ask a lot of questions. They ring the library. Interest in the library has gone up. And we will see a lot of research activity based actually on the access to the journals. The impact from both looking at both academia and the policy makers just resulted to quality papers and research outputs that has, in, that has resulted into good government policies in different sectors. I benefited personally uh, in terms of capacity building. I was able to get the skills that are required to um, disseminate e-resources. Uh, consequently, I've been able to impart the same skill uh, to other users, and I think that is uh, something that I've achieved as a person. So the approach in as part of going national, you come and run a workshop for Kenya, and there are about 15 people attending the workshop, really had a major impact. And I, I, I really must say that that approach is an approach that I have always mentioned to uh, donor funding projects wherever I have been, that if you go in a country and train 15 people, those 15 people are able to get together and they are able to come up with something. So to me that was really an excellent approach and it helped us, helped us to sustain ourselves. Mm -hmm.